The following program is underwritten in part by World's Best Cat Litter. You love your cat, but you don't love the litter box mess. Switch to World's Best Cat Litter and get a cleaner litter box with less hassle and less litter. Find it at Target, Walmart, and in your local grocery and pet stores. Celebrating the connection with our pets, this is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. Merry Christmas Eve to you. Happy holidays. Also, Hanukkah, too. You notice the two holidays are actually aligned this year. That doesn't happen normally? I I don't follow Hanukkah. I never know. that. It's not the same day every year. No, it isn't. Really? It isn't. Mm -mm. Not a lot of people know that. I didn't know that. Uh, But tomorrow, a lot of you will be opening presents, and uh, your cats will be opening all kinds of good gifts. And your doggies. And your doggies and your ferrets and your flamingos, if you give your flamingos gifts. I, of course, will start my shopping tonight is when I I used to get the last-minute deals. And uh, that's why I wait. Till. Oh, that's too stressful. Don't know how you do that. I just want to sit down, kick my shoes off, and have a good drink. That's all at that point. You know what? Yeah. Judy brought in some eggnog this morning, so if you'd like some of that before uh, we kick I off. I could use some today. Yeah. Today, Joanne Worley will be joining us. That's very exciting. What is she doing? She's just calling to say hello, huh? Just kind of updating on what they're doing at Actors and Others for Animals. Yeah, she is the uh, president of Actors and Others for Animals, a Los Angeles organization, a bunch of celebrities. Yeah, we like to check in with them just to see what they're doing, what they got planned for next year, what they did this year. And we'd love to know what you're doing. So if you want to give us a holler, toll-free, 1-866-405-8405. Dr. Debbie is here to answer your questions. We have... Uh, sort of different than we usually do. We're going to have some Christmas stories today. Christmas I love stories. Christmas stories. And I spent actually probably an hour yesterday at the uh, toy store, at the, the cat store. toy store, <laughs> looking for uh, the, the perfect the stocking perfect stuffers. Uh, Lori, what are you working on for this hour in the newsroom? Well, uh, speaking of cats, maybe, maybe your cats would like some meow Juana. Yep, I'm sure they would. <laughs> It's a new uh, line, a new product that's coming out on the market, and we'll tell you all about it. It's got a really funny twist to it, if you haven't guessed already. Okay, that's on the way in just a couple of minutes. Go on to Dave. Go on to Dave. Hey, Dave. How are you doing, Dave? Okay, there. Pretty good. Where are you calling in oh. from today? Well, we're over here on 15 in California right at the moment. Oh, your driver, OTR? Or 40. Well, she is there. I was back here in the back here, but uh, I'm, I'm with you now. Okay. I got uh, Dr. Debbie here. Okay. Well, hi. This is Dr. Debbie. What can I do for you? Well, it's all about uh, our kitty or our cat. or named Kitty. It had a worm or something here, and we put that stuff in the back. What's the name of that? Not the back of his neck. The Revolution. The Revolution. Okay. And he had like a little teeny white worm. You're seeing the worms in the poop I'm taking that? Yes, yes. Okay. And anything else do you have? Are you battling fleas? Because that's what I was wondering if no. there were. No. No? No. No fleas. None of that problems. Okay. But uh, it's just, you know, if he's in the house once in a while, and, you know, he's in a, he's a, he's an in and out cat, whatever he wants to be, I guess. Okay. But, uh, I hate to take him up here to the vets and for the vet to do the same thing I'm going to do, because I put that stuff on him once a month. Yeah. I guess what I'm trying to figure out here is if they're applying revolution, that, that works for some types of worms, and it's kind of important we know what kind of worm that um, you, have they diagnosed this? No, it's just, what do you say, a white worm, Karen? Yes. Okay. It's just a white-looking worm. A All right. A little so, one, she said. And it looks like it breaks off or whatever, I don't know. Ah, okay, kind of like a dried-up piece of rice, perhaps? Like a dried-up piece of rice? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, good, because that kind of gets us to, even without having a sample, vets love when you guys bring in samples of things. So, number one, we'd want a poop sample to really know what we're dealing with. But from what you're describing, I might worry that this could be a tapeworm. And tapeworms don't always show up in a poop sample. So if you actually see a piece of this or a worm segment, we want you to bring that along to the vet office so we can make sure we're giving you the right medicine. Because if we're doing ta- dealing with tapeworms, there's two big things we have to look at. One is how tapeworms are acquired from an animal eating fleas. That's how they get them. 
So yeah. that's where the revolution is probably playing a role in why they went that road, because that helps to treat with fleas. It's not really for tapeworms, though, so there are um, oral medications to help get rid of the actual worms that are internally. So those are things, there's a product called Drontal that we can use. Um, there's a topical that we can use as well. But it, we would need something specific for those tapeworms. So I would make sure you, you know, pick up that phone and say, hey, we've got some worms. And Doc on the radio says we need to do some other things. And I think uh, we can get so some. Once he, once he did have a worm or something, that stuff's no good for what, it, you know what I'm saying, is it? Well, it is good for some types of worms. So, yes, we do use yeah. the Revolution for some types of internal worms, but it doesn't do a good job with uh, the tapeworms. And uh, for kitties, you know, I think a lot of people may may go to that if we don't know what worm because it's easy. We don't have to shove a pill down a cat. And who likes to do that to their cats? Um, well, but, um, if, the vet said he didn't want to stick his fingers in his mouth because the cat's so big. Uh-huh. So he just put that stuff on his back of his neck. He said, that'll take care of him. Yeah. Like, well, well, that's what I've been doing too, and it ain't apparently it didn't work. Yeah. Well, if we are looking for a product that is a topical that is good for tapeworms, um, there is a topical one out there called Profender. Um, so that would be what I might say. Uh, write that down, Profender, and that Profender, might be the topical right we want to use more for tapeworms rather than the other. So, um, but uh, yeah, and that's a big kitty. So uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd want to stick my fingers in there if there was a risk I wouldn't get them back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that was uh that's what the doctor said. He, you know, he says, well, I don't want, I don't want to put my finger in his mouth. He might get me, and he just said, well, put this back here a minute. But that's the same thing I'm doing, and you know, so if he's getting it, apparently it ain't working, right? Right, right. So, yeah, and we also want to make sure that uh, if we're still dealing with fleas, now we can treat a pet for tapeworms, and they can still get them again. So we want to make sure we stay on top of flea management. So I'm not saying d- abandon your efforts for uh, what he's doing currently for flea control, because I think that's going to still be very important. Um, but we need to expand that and cover that up for um, the tapeworms. So. Just a little bit more medicine, that's all. <laughs> Dave, we appreciate your call today, one 405 8405 Good luck with those kitties there. It's toll free to talk to any one of the Dream Team. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Just fine. I'm, I'm a truck driver. I'm driving through Atlanta right now. Driving through but I'm a, Atlanta? Yeah, I'm on the way home. Do you travel with your animal? No, they took him out of the truck because, uh, I don't know, I, I could try to get him back. But it's my wife's dog I'm concerned with. Okay, well, I got the doctor here, so what's up? It's a chihuahua. He's a male. He's five years old, pedigree. And uh, he's never, uh, well, he's marking my house, and he's, and he's humping on his toy. Okay, so I'm guessing this boy's got two things dangling between his hind limbs, huh? Right, right. He's not okay. Neutered. Now, so my question was, if I have him neutered, will that stop, or is that well, going to continue on? Well, what you're describing, those are sexual behaviors. So while it's impossible to say it won't happen at all, um, they're driven by hormones. So an intact male dog is very likely to hump on objects or people, um, and um, definitely marking is part of their communication. So my number one recommendation is, um, you know, he makes a better pet, and it's healthier for him to get him neutered. So, yes, I wouldn't hesitate to get that done. And only in some rare cases do we see dogs that will still um, mark or that will still um, have some of those over-sexual behaviors like the, the humping and that. And in those cases, um, you know, we have to kind of deal a little bit more training-wise with that. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, so still, definitely. Because, you know, I mean, he's an inside dog. He only goes on a leash. And I've been trying to find a female. made him, you know what I mean? These are some awesome dogs. Uh, he doesn't need to breed just because he's awesome. You love him all the same. And everybody wants to breed their dog because they want to pass on the good genes. But you know what? Every day at the shelter, even here in Las Vegas, Chihuahuas, pure breed chihuahuas are put to sleep because they don't have homes. So I would stop you before you even think about breeding just for the sake of, you know, breeding on his good oh. genes. Really. Um, so yeah, I'd embrace a castration, go ahead and get this little fella neutered, help his behavior problems. And then also, you know, it helps to, you know, save a life because, you know, those pups that might be born, you know, would displace, uh, 
the hopeful adoption of some other dogs that are already what, waiting. What kind of cancers can we avoid if we get neutered and spayed? Well, in male dogs, definitely testicular cancer. Um, it helps to decrease risk of prostate cancer in male dogs. And there's even some skin tumors in male dogs that are hormonally driven. So those can be eliminated or wiped out um, with uh, castration. In female dogs, there's a lot. Mammary cancers. If we spay a dog before they go into heat, we can make the risk of breast cancer zero. If you wait until after they've had a few heats or let them have, you know, babies, that risk of breast cancer goes up. So uh, spaying also um, saves female dogs from having the problem of pyometra, which is an infection in the uterus, which is very, very serious, life-threatening, completely preventable by getting them spayed. So, yeah, there's overwhelming um, evidence to to recommend spaying a neuter. 1-866-405-8405 to connect with any one of the Dream Team right now. This healthy serving of Animal Radio is brought to you by the Grain Free Red Barn Naturals canned food for dogs and cats. Did you know it's always made in the USA with natural, functional ingredients to support your pet's optimal health? Learn more over at redbarninc.com. Thank you, Red Barn, for underwriting Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1 866 405 8405. Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. Children at a Swedish school were recently terrorized by a drunken elk. Yes, I said drunk. Officials said the elk might have gotten a little tipsy from eating fermented apples. The elk was thought to have been attracted to the apple trees near the school, and after sampling some, he started acting irrationally. Not driving or anything, just wacky enough to scare the children. In other deer-related news, a Wisconsin woman's decorative ceramic lawn deer was attacked by the real thing leaving it headless. Police reporting to the scene were able to identify the track marks from a real deer who obviously won the fight. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. This is Animal Radio. We can't tell you why canine caviar is the only alkaline-based dog food. But we can tell you, alkaline is proven to minimize the risk of renal failure and pancreatitis, reduce scratching, cellular degeneration, and disease, keeping your furry friend youthful and healthy longer. And those are the reasons we can fit into this short commercial. But by visiting caninecaviar.com, you'll see exactly what we do to make a better food for your dog. Try the one and only alkaline dog food risk-free. Canine Caviar. Hi, this is Jeff and Tyler Ferguson from Modern Family. I'm on Animal Radio. Adopt a pet. Uh, We're going to go to the phones in just a couple of minutes to answer your call. Toll free at 1-866-405-8405. Also coming up, Joanne Worley. Actress and comedian Joanne Worley will be joining us just, uh, just around the corner here. What are you working on over there in the newsroom, Lori? What? I got the, the perfect uh, gift for somebody who might be irresponsible or too irresponsible to have a, a real pet. Um, we've got the perfect pet for them. It even comes with a leather coat. And uh, we'll talk about the most popular puppy names of the year. That's on the way. Hello, Animal Radians. It's Robert Semro, your Pet World Insider, here with this week's Animal Radio List. Five great no-cost gifts for your pet. The holidays are here and you're scrambling to find the perfect gift for everyone on your list. Even Santa feels the pressure to deliver. Since you don't have the luxury of elves, I thought I would help my animal radio friends out with some advice that I learned over the years from my friends at the North Pole. Here are five great no-cost gift ideas for your pets this year. Now I understand that everything has a cost, even time. So know that these are low-cost ideas that will have a big payoff with your pets. Additionally, the Internet and YouTube are your friend. Take a look at these treasure troves of DIY and simple-to-do projects and more. Let's begin with socks. Socks are not just for the feet. They're also for making play toys for dogs and cats who can be entertained and energized playing with a sock. We all have a missing sock match for a sock as we know that the sock goblins always seem to grab one or two when we do laundry. Or maybe not. Maybe it's our beloved pet saying that they would love a new sock toy created with care and love by someone they know. So a DIY sock toy for your pet should be on your list this year. 
Next, a homemade treat baked at home by you is a great way to treat your pet this year. I'm putting this in the no-cost category because it's very likely that you have the ingredients in your kitchen to make a simple but enjoyable treat for your cat or dog. It doesn't take a lot of ingredients, time, or money to create a treat that will warm your heart and fill their belly. Next up, cardboard boxes are more than something you put gifts in. In fact, cats, birds, dogs, and more often find a box very entertaining. If you want to add a little excitement for them, add a treat or 20 inside, and you'll see a motivated pet go to work with joy and excitement over this simple and easy-to-make gift. Okay, the next one is one that always gets an all moment from those who hear the story and an all right from those receiving the gift. That is a t-shirt pillow. It's just as simple as it sounds. You're going to take a few of your older, ready-to-be-retired t-shirts and stuff them into an older pillowcase or even one of the old retiring t-shirts. Seal the ends with a little bit of sewing or tie them off if you can't sew and your pets will love this in part because it's part of you that they're getting, literally. These retired shirts have memories and smells that are uniquely yours, and your pet will cherish them. Finally, the number one no-cost gift that you can, should, and must give your pet is time with you. Your pet needs this, and so do you. You're a family, and at this time of the year, family is what matters most. Share your no-cost pet gift suggestions on our Animal Radio Facebook page. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. It's the time of year when everyone is out shopping, fighting for parking spaces, and spending way too much money, all in pursuit of the perfect present. Maybe the best gift is one we already enjoy every day. This season... Why not consider the presence of our animal friends as our present? Animals gift us with their lives for our comfort and convenience. They lift our spirits, inspire great works of art, song, and poetry, and are the most agreeable companions. All it takes is one small, cheerful sparrow in the backyard to remind us that we are never alone. Scientific studies show that the unconditional love of our pets can touch and heal us in magnificent ways. People experience lower blood pressure, stress, and heart rates when in the presence of their animal companions. Those who have suffered heart attacks live longer if they have an animal friend than if they don't. And people with pets just make fewer trips to the doctor's office. If we are suffering from depression, having a dog to walk, a cat to care for, a bird to talk to, or even watching fish in an aquarium helps us find a focus outside our sadness and allows us to connect with the larger world. When horses allowed us on their backs, they gifted us with the ability to travel farther than our own two feet could ever carry us. Today, it is still horsepower that gets us to the mall. Pigeons have saved the lives of soldiers by carrying secret information across enemy lines. The seashell murex gives its life to gift us with the color purple. Bats gift us with lovely and peaceful twilights by eating mosquitoes. For the ancient Romans, a magical woodpecker brought rain to refresh and revitalize a city. That is a great present. It was Raven who brought fire to humankind. And in the Quran, the Saluki breed of dog is considered a gift of Allah. One of the most prized gifts one could receive from the ancient Chinese emperor was one of his royal dogs. And how long would Noah have been adrift if a dove had not found land? A recent study found that workers would be willing to take a cut in salary and work longer hours if they could bring their dog to work. A survey by Time magazine found that playing with a pet improved one's mood more than exercise, eating, or sex. If you happen to be ill in France and a ladybug lands on you, she will fly away with your sickness. Earthworms work the soil so our flowers will flourish. Bees give us honey. And my favorite. Butterflies prove to us that even if we sometimes creep like a caterpillar, we hold within us the power to spread our wings and fly. So during this holiday season, consider the presence of your animal friends as your present and have your presence be their present too. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. 
All dogs should eat a pH-balanced alkaline diet. An alkaline diet reduces health risks and can also reduce scratching, shedding, and hot spots. So does this mean you need to check your dog's pH balance? No, because canine caviar has created the first and only alkaline dog food that is pH-balanced. It also has the highest metabolized calories. What does this mean? Your dog needs to eat less. Get a healthier dog and save money with Canine Caviar products. Find them at your local pet supply store or online at caninecaviar.com. Delta Dawn, what's that power you have on? Hi, this is Tanya Tucker on Animal Radio. Love those pets. This is an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Fear Free. Fear Free takes the pet out of petrified and puts the treat into treatment. To learn more and find a certified Fear Free veterinary professional near you, visit fearfreepets.com. I'm Lori Brooks. Well, you probably know that those laundry detergent pods that so many people use these days are dangerous to children, but did you know that they're also very harmful to animals. Most soaps and detergents contain chemicals which are called ionic or anionic surfactants. And when a small amount of that is ingested, it's possible for pets to become really sick with gastrointestinal upset, you know, the typical drooling, diarrhea, vomiting, or even worse, they can get very serious respiratory issues. Of the cases reported to the pet poison hotline over the past couple of years, they say 21% experienced a cough because of the irritation. 17% became lethargic for a few days and 13% had difficulty breathing, including wheezing or other respiratory irritations. And one of the most serious problems that they say happens with these pods because they're pressurized is that they're punctured when an animal bites down on them. Mm. And when they're punctured in all that pressure, the force can literally send that surfactant down into your pet's respiratory tract. It can even aspirate and then cause some really severe respiratory symptoms. And it's because those chemicals in those pods are so concentrated and it's just basically, you know, shot down there with that force of air. You know what? Those those pods look so tasty. I mean, to me, they even look attractive. (laughs) So I can see how a dog... that's part of the problem. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, there's a a nearly 2,000-year-old pet cemetery that they've discovered over in Egypt, and they found in it the remains of dogs, cats, and monkeys. And uh, it was uncovered in this ancient Egyptian town, and a few of the animals were still wearing iron collars when they were laid to rest. And they say also the graves of two young cats, maybe kittens, included very intricate ostrich shell beads. And then um, some of the other presumed pets were nestled under mats or pottery jars. And uh, all of that, they say, means that the animals were deliberately buried there with care. Experts who are, are working on that excavation site say the very careful treatment of the animals' bodies suggest a pretty emotional relationship between humans and pets. And that same area, as a matter of fact, was also kind of animal-centric from the beginning. It originally served as a way station for African elephants that were headed to battlefields uh, way, way back in the first and second centuries A.D., when the region was a pretty busy trading center and the Romans were in power. History shows the Romans really loved their pets, especially their dogs. And one grave at this specific site held a young Mastiff-type dog, so a really big dog. And testing showed its belly had held a final meal of fish and goat meat. And tests on the bones show that it suffered from a type of bone cancer that is still commonly found in dogs today. Hmm. That dog's body had been wrapped in a basket and then covered with pieces of all this ex- exotic broken pottery. Again, clear evidence that it was a very loved animal. Wow. And uh, Meowawana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a great name? It's a, a company that is making catnip now, and they've launched a brand new product line that is creatively branded and plays on the euphoric high, you know, that some cats get from catnip. The company sells 100% organic catnip that is available for shipping anywhere in the world, though it's actually grown in Southern California and in Washington State. Now, although Meowawana uses the trademarked tagline, for cats 
who need the weed. <laughs> there is no marijuana in it. It's really perfectly safe and legal for both cats and people. Now, catnip, which is from the mint family, if you're a gardener, contains the chemical nepeta lactone, and that is what triggers the sense of euphoria in some cats. Not all cats, though, react to catnip. Sensitivity, they say, is an inherited trait that affects maybe 50 to as much as 75% of cats. Wow. But catnip produces a different response depending on how it's used or consumed. For example, uh, sniffing catnip produces a, a stimulant effect, while eating it for cats can cause sedation. So uh, the catnip buds, uh, they say, these of the Miawahuana brand are harvested during peak oil production, and that gives the cats the next level in the catnip experience. So for the most dedicated catnip connoisseurs, Miawahuana offers this um, kind of a, a gimmick thing. It's a play on words. Again, the granddaddy humidity-regulated per cigar box, which is filled with 100% organic granddaddy per catnip buds. Uh, I guess the buds is are, is kind of a, a marijuana thing, too. I'm not really sure, but they've said that a couple of times. And the company even offers their customers a medical Miawahuana ID card, <laughs> just in case. And uh, the, the ID card includes the cat's picture, its name, and sex, and date of birth. I love it. I do, too. I and love the card. <laughs> tomorrow, a lot of people are going to be opening, no, excuse me, a lot of cats are going to be opening their gifts, and it's going to have a lot of that in it. So I, I just thought it was a funny twist on this season. Absolutely. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Fear Free. The veterinarian isn't typically thought of as your pet's favorite place to go. With Fear Free, that all changes. To learn more and find a certified Fear Free veterinary professional near you, visit FearFreePets.com. Hi friends, this is Dr. Marty Becker, America's veterinarian. As you know, going to the vet can be a traumatic experience for your pet, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, vet visits can be something your pet looks forward to. Introducing Fear Free. When your veterinarian is Fear Free certified, you will be assured your pet's vet visit is more free of fear, anxiety, and stress than ever before. Fear Free takes the pet out of petrified, and it puts the treat into treatment. To find a certified Fear Free veterinarian near you, go to fearfreepets.com. This is Jerry Seinfeld saying happy holiday, happy new year, happy you, and see you next year. When my daughter Rachel was six years old, we went to the local shelter looking for the perfect cat. We liked a lot of the cats we saw there, but we were especially taken with a mother and her kittens. All the kittens were entirely jet black, except for one. She had a small white tip to her tail, like one bright light in the night sky. We brought her home and called her Star. Starry was a charmer. Rachel admired her proud manner and enjoyed even more the secret knowledge that it was all an act. Starry could only appear aloof for so long before leaping up into Rachel's arms to be cuddled and stroked. As time went by, Rachel and Starry adopted certain routines. At night when we watched TV, Starry crawled into Rachel's lap and stayed there, purring contentedly. Starry always rubbed her face along Rachel's chin, ending the love test with a gentle nip on Rachel's nose. Sometimes I couldn't help but feel the injustice of this. I was the one who took care of the cat, feeding, cleaning, grooming, yet Starry was clearly Rachel's cat. Eventually, I came to love watching their cozy bond. My little girl grew up, went to junior high, and finally high school. Starry was 10 and Rachel was 16. Starry and Rachel were still close, though Rachel spent less and less time at home. Starry spent most of her day sitting on the sideboard in the dining room, looking out of the window into the backyard. One Sunday morning, early in November, Starry got out the door before we could stop her. When Rachel's friend came over to study that evening, she came in the door with a worried expression. Where's Starry? she asked. When we told her we didn't know, she had us come outside with her. There was a black cat lying in the street. It was Star. The cat's body was warm and she didn't appear to be injured. There was no blood or wounds that we could see. It was after hours, but our vet agreed to meet us after our distraught phone call. Rachel was upset, but holding it together, my husband Bert and I told her to stay at home while we took Star to the vet. Bert and I picked Starry up carefully and rushed her to the vet's office. The vet examined her briefly before looking up and saying, I'm sorry, but she's gone. When we got home, Rachel could tell by her faces that Starry was dead. She turned without speaking and went up to her room. 
It had been a hard year for me. My father had died not long before, and I hadn't totally come to grips with the loss. Rachel and I were in the midst of the delicate dance mothers and teenage daughters everywhere find themselves performing, circling, pulling away, and coming together in odd fits and spurts. I took a chance and knocked on her door. When she said come in, I sat with her on the bed and we cried together. It was a good cry, clearing out some more of the grief I couldn't face about father and bringing Rachel and I closer as we shared our sadness about Starry. Life went on, Thanksgiving came and went, Rachel and I both found ourselves mistaking black sweatshirts strewn on chairs or floors for our newly missing black cat. The sideboard looked desolate, empty of the warm presence glowing with life I'd come to expect there. Over and over, little pangs of loss stung our hearts as the weeks went by. I was out Christmas shopping when I saw it. It was a Christmas tree ornament in the shape of a cat angel, a black cat with white wings and a red ball between her paws. I had to get it but bought it wondering if it would be a happy remembrance of the cat we'd loved or a chilling reminder of our loss. When I got home, I painted a white tip at the end of the angel cat's long black tail and hung the ornament on the tree. That evening when Rachel came in, she flopped onto the couch. She sat staring at the Christmas tree, spacing out after a long day at school and after school sports. I was in the kitchen when suddenly I heard her gasp. Mom, she called, Mom, come here. I walked in and found her standing in front of the tree, looking at the cat angel with shining eyes. Oh, Mom, it's Starry. Where did you find an ornament with a tail like hers? She looked about six again. I gathered her into my arms, and wonderfully, she didn't resist. We stood together, looking at the tree, feeling our love for Starry and for each other. Our charming, nose-nipping cat was gone, but now Starry, the Christmas angel, would be a part of our family tradition for years to come. Sometimes, you can make your own miracles. This is Animal Radio, baby. I am the family dog, and it's that time of year again. The one where pet parents start looking for Fido-friendly hotels and destinations where Fido is welcome. Make no bones about it. Pets are part of the family, and we like to sniff out new places, too. And we hate to be turned away, especially when we're on our best behavior. So we won't be left out in the cold. Be sure to pick up a copy of Fido-friendly magazine to find the best hotels and destinations where Fido is always welcome. Go online to FidoFriendly.com and subscribe today. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1-866-405-8405. And let's go to Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi. How are you? Where are you calling from today? Um, I'm calling from, actually, I'm calling from work, so I'm in Anaheim, but I live in Huntington Beach. Oh, okay. Well, i got the whole Dream Team here. What's going on, and how can we help you? Um, well, I have a cat that I've had since August. But I had her fixed two weeks ago, and now she's got this new thing where she's dipping her water bottle, water bowl over. Tipping her water bottle? Her water bowl. Okay. And she's doing it now for three days, and I don't want to go without water, but I'm tired of the big, huge water mess I'm getting on my floor, and I don't know how to prevent, how to stop her from doing it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So first got to ask you, what kind of water bowl is it? What, what is it made out of? It's a metal water bowl. Okay. All righty. So when I have cats that do this kind of thing, I like to first look at what is the motivation? What's causing them to do this? Um, Because it could be a lot of different things, and we're going to approach this in a different way. Um, It could be as simple as uh, the bowl is there and the cat is bored. (laughs) And, and okay. it's something to do. So that that's definitely one way we might address this. Some cats okay. will also do this in the presence of their owners, and they do it more for attention getting. So, um, you know, dogs may bark uh, to get attention. Cats knock things off of countertops. They upturn things, and they do it because we get annoyed, and we go, hey, what are you doing? And we pay attention okay. to them. Right. Right. Um, the, the other thing that, I, that sometimes I've seen that this can be a problem is when there's something that's, I'll just call it offensive in the environment. Um, We see this with dogs sometimes that have canned food that smells. They'll upturn their bowl because they don't like the smell of the food. Um, Sometimes reflective 
bowls I've found to be annoying for some animals, and they'll either avoid eating or drinking out of them um, okay. or um, or do something like this. So okay. you have to look at all those things. So the, the, the first solution I would have for you would be um, simply to get a bowl that's either designed not to be upturned, so the if you have a um, plastic bowl that is the kind that can't be tipped, um, that would be one, one type of solution. The other thing okay. I've seen is um, using more of almost like a saucer or a serving plate. Um, kind of like out of like a ceramic or, or heavy material. And this for cats can be also a role because when I talk about the offensive thing, some cats just don't like their whiskers touching the sides of the bowl. So whether it's a food or a water bowl, if they stick their face in there and every time they're doing eating or drinking, it's touching the sides. Some cats find that a bit annoying and they won't like that. So a cat will tip their food bowl over to eat the food off the floor, um, or they'll seek out water in other places. So um, just examine that, the diameter of that, if you can. I'm more worried that she's not drinking any water. I mean, I give her stuff to be that has moisture in it, but it's not like she was drinking before. She goes through the whole bowl of water a day. Yeah, no, and I don't, I don't, definitely don't want you to take water away from a cat or a dog during the day. Yeah, I took the bathtub on to a drip today while I was at work. Because she'll jump in the bathtub, and I thought, okay, at least there's water in there, and she'll drink it. Then she can't turn it over. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's the kitty water fountain. Some cats find that moving water entertaining, um, and that would obviously be something that's very difficult to upturn if you're a cat. Dogs certainly could. Now, the other thing also is, you know, we're talking about things like maybe a boredom issue or attention seeking. You want to make sure also that we are uh, giving structured playtime, interactive time that you spend with your kitty. And, it, you know, five minutes, ten minutes at the max, maybe a couple times a day of doing something where she's chasing, she's pouncing, pouncing, she's, you know, practicing predatory activities and that can be another thing also just kind of that goes to not just the addressing the boredom but gives her some work to do Um, because that's the one thing we take away with cats we put them in our house we put the food in front of them and we kind of take away all the opportunities they have to be a cat in the wild yeah i put things up above my window so she can climb up and kind of you know she's got scratching posts that are like four or five feet tall so she can jump on those it's got levels on it but you know, I've just noticed certain behaviors coming out of her after I got her fixed. And I just, I thought about getting her fixed would mellow out a little bit. And instead, I've got this different personality kit. And I'm like, hey, what did I do? Well, I, I yeah. highly doubt. It's probably not related to being fixed. Yeah. It- Okay. And thank you, Hal, because that, that is def- definitely, I'd have to dispel that. It has nothing to do with hormones. And actually, you know, for, for female cats, spaying them, you know, it really isn't a way to, to kind of change their behavior unless it's related to estrus. So if they're acting horny when they're in heat, um, spaying does change that behavior, but it doesn't change their general activity level, their okay. kind of playfulness, stuff like that. Um, and same thing for male cats. You know, it changes the desire to want to roam, get out, and uh, right. kind of carouse, but it really doesn't change them from being a young, active cat. So, yeah. It doesn't I, I, change that aspect of her at all. She's still as active as she was before. Yeah, yeah. So that's good and bad. So, but yeah, try some of those things with the different um, uh, types of uh, food bowls, water bowls, and then um, you know, there's a lot of great interactive toys. And I know you said you you're providing toys, but cats' attention span and interest in toys lasts less than three to five minutes. So even though you've got those things, in a few minutes it's already old news, and she's going to need something else. So you really have to pull something out and kind of different all the time, just to kind of keep her interested and kind of get her um, interactive with that. Okay, I was just hoping it wasn't an issue where all of a sudden I, I have a bigger issue and maybe I should take her to my vet and say, look, and maybe she's got a kidney infection because with her not drinking as much water, she's not going, she's not using her cat box as much either. And that worries me. Oh, no, definitely, yeah. So if there's a change in her elimination, now if she's not going to the bathroom as much because you're restricting her water, that's a simple fix. And that I would definitely, like I said, I'd stop that right now, make sure she has free access to water. But if you feel she's not eliminating enough or she's drinking excessively, then that definitely would be something I'd address at the the doctor's office. Thank you, Linda, for your call. Let us know how that goes. Call us back if you have any more questions on that. Toll free at 1-866-405-8405. Don't forget, you can also ask your questions from the free Animal Radio app. We'll head back to the phones after this. 
people say, less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Red Barn canned food for cats and dogs is grain and gluten free. Celebrating the connection with our pets. This is Animal Radio, featuring your dream team, veterinarian Dr. Debbie White and groomer Joey Villani. And here are your hosts, Hal Abrams and Judy Francis. At this hour on Animal Radio, actress, comedian Joanne Worley will be joining us. Uh, someone called last hour and said, who's Joanne Worley? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I guess... We're damn old. They never watch Laugh-In, yeah. They yeah, never heard of Laugh-In. Or Hollywood Squares. <laughs> Wasn't she a square on Hollywood Squares, too? I believe so. I'm she did sure so she much. Was, yeah, she's she funny. Did. She is funny. She's so energetic. Before we go to the phones, what are you doing this hour in the newsroom? Well, there's a, a certain world leader, no names yet, who has been all over the news lately. This guy seems to have a lot of pictures of him with dogs. And apparently, he's a big dog lover, but who knew? So I will reveal his identity, because I'm sure you're going to want to know. Okay. I want to know. I'm curious. Yeah. I mean, dog lovers are good people, right? So, I mean, it's For the most part. Person. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's go to the phones. I believe we have, is it Doug? Hey, Doug, how you doing? Hey, folks. My girlfriend bought me a, uh, a poodle. Oh, and okay. um, it seems to have a microchip in it, I guess. She got it from a poodle rescue uh, organization, um, and they informed her that they were they were going to be the second to call in case of an emergency. Now, the only way I see this, that they could be doing this, is if their information was on that chip. How can I get mm-hmm. their information off of that chip? Okay, so once you're actually the owner of this dog, you have the rights to have who you want as the contact information, with some exceptions. On most microchips, that will have a record of where the chip was purchased from or where it was implanted. So that will stay on record. But that's not necessarily the contact information. So what normally happens is you have two options for contact information, your first or primary, which is yourself, and then a secondary, which tends to be a friend, family member, someone who lives elsewhere than you do. And you have the right to choose those and update that information as you see fit. The companies will charge you for it, but, but yeah, you have control of that information. But you're probably not going to ever take them off of the history if they were the ones that put that chip. Beyond. Why is it you want to change, just for curiosity? Well, I just, I look at that more of a, it's a personal okay. thing that, okay, they sold me the animal, I gave them their donation, and why should they have any further contact okay. that regarding seems fair. that animal? That seems fair. So so basically, doctor, he would uh, get in touch with, let's say, if it was Avid, if it was an Avid chip. How do you know what kind of chip it is? How would they figure out what kind of chip it is, doc? Well, it's very easy. If you don't know, you don't have paperwork, take your dog to the closest veterinary office. They can scan for it, see what the chip identity is, and that will kind of help uh, direct you. But if you have paperwork and you know what company it's with, you just give them a call or go online, and you can take those steps and, and get the pet registered appropriately how you want it. Okay, and I can get them taken off of there as the second to contact then, right? Yes, yeah, because but- really, the second contact is legally would be a second party that they would, um, whoever found the dog, would re- be able to release the pet to. So, yeah, if you don't want them to be that person, you have that right to change that. So. Now, they might charge you to change it. They might say, okay, it's going to cost you 30 bucks to change it, but uh, that's well, it. That, that's, that's fine. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't care. I just, like I said, I don't think that, I don't feel that they have a right that, you sure. know, that they should have to be the second contact. Uh, for that dog. Now, I'll tell you why these uh, agencies do that, and I see it all around. In mm-hmm. fact, some of our animals have that, too. And that's because if, for some reason, they abandon the animal, they want the animal to return back to the agency where you got it. So that's why they do it. But you can change it. A great question, Doug. I think that's the first time I've ever heard that question. At one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. 405 8405 Hi, Debbie. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Where are you today? Right now, I'm in Wyoming. You travel with your uh, animal? Are you a trucker? I'm a trucker, but uh, my animal stays at home with his dad. (laughs) Oh, well, there you go. It gets a little rest there. (laughs) Well, Dr. Debbie's here to help you with your dog. Well, I have a six-year-old Shih Tzu, and he 
picks up a toy and he runs circles around the dinner table. <laughs> now, he'll do that for about an hour. He'll stop, he'll piddle, and he'll keep right on running. If I run in, Yeah, I'll chase him out the door because he has a doggy door. I'll chase him out the door. He'll turn right around, come back in, and circle around the table again. Okay. Now, is this happening while you're eating then? No. It happens all day long. After he's fed, he lays down, and he doesn't do it anymore. Huh. So if he does this, then you take him out. Do you feed him? No, not always. I only feed him once a day. I'm just trying to figure out what's happening at the time when he's doing this, if he's just kind of hanging out and he sees his toy and he says, oh, I'm going to pick up this toy, or if he's presented that toy for, for some special purpose. No, he just runs and finds it and starts running around the table. <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's the and, strangest thing. <laughs> and how do you respond or what are you doing when you notice him doing this? I could be sitting there watching TV and he'll just start doing it. But what do you do after he starts doing that? I usually just let him do it. My husband knows what's going to happen, and he tries to chase him outside. Can I, can I just, I want to clarify this. He picks up his toy, he runs around, and then he piddles? He's peeing yep. after, after he does this? Yep. He'll run around the table for maybe a half hour. He'll stop, he'll piddle, and he'll just keep right on running. Uh, I, I did not hear the piddle. That, I didn't so. hear it either, and that's why I wanted to clarify it. Okay, all yeah. right. Well, that's definitely a little bit more concerning because at first I was thinking this was an attention-seeking behavior where he was doing this behavior in the hopes of getting you guys off the couch or away from the TV and chasing him because that's certainly one possible motivation for that kind of peculiar behavior. But when we throw urination in there, I, w I guess my veterinary head comes up and ding, and, and I would definitely want to check out this young man's um, urinary tract and see if there's any issues that might be going on. And I have seen some dogs that can have problems with either infections or even possibly stones where they try to verbalize uh, this issue in some way, and it's hard for them. They're not used to talking to us. So in some ways they can find something that is a soothing or comforting item, and then that might be his toy. It might be you. Some people you know, the dog will seek out them. But I would say that this behavior might get me first alerted to checking out for any kind of urinary problem and then work from there. If we can clear out that there's no health problem medically, then I might talk about, you know, there's different ways to uh, work on calm behavior rewards, um, maybe avoiding this toy um, or giving a substitute toy that maybe won't elicit that same behavior. But um, I'm going to say here that I really think we need to go um, check out the pee, if you will. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you got to go to the vet, figure out what's wrong there uh, next. I know that uh, Ladybug will run. If she gets hurt, she'll run thinking that she's going to escape. And she'll do the zooms, too. She'll run around if, mm -hmm. if something happens. Yeah. So it could be something that the veterinarian will uh, identify immediately. Shih Tzus definitely can have some problems with types of bladder stones in potential, in, in particular. So that's just kind of one of the big reasons why that just comes to my mind there. Thank you. one 405 to connect with any one of the Dream Team right now. Joey's dressed as Santa today, and there's a little bit of eggnog going around the studio. <laughs> yeah. I got my hat on, too. Yes, you do. And guess what? Our next caller, her name is Glee. Uh, I'm a fan of the I show, too. <laughs> hey, Glee. Hey, Hal. How are you? Doing very well. So what's going on? Well, I have two parakeets. Their names are Spinelli and Maxi. Spinelli is almost three years, three years old. Maxi is a year old. They're doing their little dance and the preening. What's going on that they're not wanting to breed, or what can I do that maybe can help them with getting them to breed? How long have they been together? They've been together almost a year. Because the most important thing is that we talk about pair bonding, and it's, it's kind of like throwing right. two strangers together and asking them to be a, a, a permanent family unit. So um, it can happen, but it helps if they have uh, kind of that connection. So that's very important in the birds <laughs> for breeding right as well. Off the bat. They have that connection. Good, good. And and we're certain we're dealing with a boy and a girl. That's always important as well. Yeah, dealing with a boy okay. and a girl. <laughs> okay. And we know that because of the color of, of the seer. So you you got your boy with the dark blue seer. Right. And the and girl's got the, got the light. 
the light, the white or tan. Okay, perfect. You have the very white and the lighting right, right? You have the very white CD on in the background and the lighting kind of dim, right? Uh, you don't, there's I'm no sorry. wine and... Um, <laughs> they love the TV. Oh, they love the TV. Oh, well... They love you know the what? TV. I actually named them after a couple people in General Hospital, and when that show comes on, they literally go berserk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how funny. It's their show. <laughs> oh, well, you know, maybe we ought to get them watching daytime uh, soap operas. That might be the, the thing that, to make a love connection here, you know? Well, right. um, I guess some guidelines that we talk about when we're trying to get little parakeets to breed, and you may be already doing these things. Um, so um, I put these on your checklist. Make sure you are or aren't doing them, and hopefully we can get everything ideal. If not, sometimes you can't make it happen. Um um, sometimes I'll actually have other breeding pairs in the same room because that kind of gets the hormones flying and uh, may mean for that we have a better breeding situation if there's others in the in the same area, uh, you know, going on the on the nest and uh, having babies there. So um, make sure your um, your temperature in the area. We want to keep it around 65 to 75. Uh, we want to cover the babies at night, right probably here, about yeah. 12. Okay, 12 hours of darkness would be best. And then in their enclosure, because we're going to be asking the mom to be making eggs and we want good calcium and vitamin D, using a full-spectrum uh, light. So similar to that you will find in um, aquariums, so in pet stores where, where you have reptiles that need vitamin oh, D. Oh, okay. I never thought of that. Yeah, so that can be helpful. Now, for birds that are housed outside, they're getting natural light. That's not a problem. But uh-huh. for indoor-kept birds, this is something that we can help enhance and right. is very important for vitamin D. Right. So I would make sure we do that. And then uh, we've got the nesting box. We try to not disturb them, give them their privacy, try to keep uh-huh. them on a schedule, clean their cage about the same time, take a good mix of different uh, green vegetables, or even sometimes some of the frozen vegetables are fine, and just kind of make that a little treat for them. Them and uh, and hopefully we can kind of trick them into getting a little nutrients like that in there. So we wish you but, the best uh, of luck with that glee. All of our romantic wishes are are <laughs> going your way. <laughs> The Movie Man six-second DVD review starts now. It's a good thing that the franchise had some work done because it's funny, endearing, and Bridget Jones's baby is PQ. The man. Just because you don't have time to read a book doesn't mean you can't enjoy stories about artists and groups that you love. To discover a whole new world of audiobooks and hear the stories that made the music, visit HappylandAudio.com. That's HappylandAudio.com. Out of the eggnog. Dogs can't have eggnog. I bet you have that mm-hmm. trouble all year. You hear about that kind of stuff where dogs get into milky stuff, milky, creamy substances like that, and eggnog. It's is- definitely around the holidays. We see a lot more of it. People drinking Kahlua and yeah. eggnog, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, not good for your animals. You know, I had a friend who would share their beer with their dog. Oh. Just pour a little bit, and that's not good for them either. No, well, you know, it actually. Uh, I knew of a dog that was given beer and then started to associate every time she smelled or heard the sound of a... <laughs> and she started drooling, like obsessively, like Turner and Hooch drooling. And it got to be a real behavior problem that my husband had to stop. Oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> the individual had to stop it because it was just such a nuisance behavior by that point any time a beer was opened. Yeah, I had a dog that when we the guys would hang out in the garage and they'd set their beers on the floor. She would go over and knock them over and drink them. So I had to go out there and tell them, you got to put it up on a shelf or yeah. something because she would knock the can over just to get to the beer. Wow. And cats like beer, too. They like the taste of, I don't know if it's the brewer's yeast. Hmm. No, this is not just dogs we're talking about. Keep them away from the alcohol as well as Uncle Louie this year. Remember what Uncle Louie did last year? <laughs> you don't want him doing that again. <laughs> Coming up in just a few minutes, we have the return of Joe Ann Worley. And uh, because it is Christmas Eve, we're doing things just a little different today. I mean, we're still taking your calls and everything, but we're also giving you some stories, some Christmas inspirational stories for your holiday listening pleasure. And this next one comes from former ASPCA President Ed Sayers. I did receive a new supplement to the book of Genesis regarding the dog and the cat. Yes, a newly discovered chapter in the book of Genesis has provided the answer to the question, where do pets come from? 
Adam and Eve said, Lord, when we were in the garden, you walked with us every day. Now we do not see you anymore. We are lonesome here, and it is difficult for us to remember how much you love us. And God said, that is no problem. I will create for you a companion that will be with you forever, and that will be a reflection of my love for you, so that you will love me even when you cannot see me. Regardless of how selfish or childish or unlovable you may be, this new companion will accept you as you are and will love you as I do in spite of yourselves. And God created a new animal to be the companion for Adam and Eve. And it was a good animal, and God was pleased. And the new animal was pleased to be with Adam and Eve, and he wagged his tail. And Adam said, Lord... I have already named all the animals in the kingdom. I cannot think of a name for this new animal. And God said, that is no problem, because I have created this new animal to be a reflection of my love for you. And his name will be a reflection of my own name. And you will call him Dog. And Dog lived with Adam and Eve and was a companion to them and loved them. And they were comforted. And God was pleased. And Dog was content and wagged his tail. After a while it came to pass that an angel came to the Lord and said, Lord, Adam and Eve have become filled with pride. They strut and preen like peacocks. And they believe they are worthy of adoration. Dog has indeed taught them that they are loved, but perhaps taught them too well. And God said, that is no problem. I will create for them a companion who will be with them forever and who will see them as they are. The companion will remind them of their limitations so they will know that they are not always worthy of adoration. And God created Cat. God created Cat to be a companion to Adam and Eve. And Cat would not obey them. <laughs> and when Adam and Eve gazed into Cat's eyes, they were reminded that they were not the supreme beings. And Adam and Eve learned humility. And they were greatly improved. And God was pleased. And Dog was happy. And Cat didn't give a shit one way or another. This is Jerry Seinfeld saying happy holiday, happy new year, happy you, and see you next year. We wish you a squeaky Christmas. We wish you a squeaky Christmas. We wish you a squeaky Christmas with no fleas in your ears. We all love our dog toys. We all love our dog toys. We all love our dog toys. So bring one right here.
six second DVD review starts now. Featuring our best friends ever. It's no secret that the secret life of pets is fantastic family fun. The men. Just because you don't have time to read a book doesn't mean you can't enjoy stories about artists and groups that you love. To discover a whole new world of audiobooks and hear the stories that made the music, visit happylandaudio.com. That's happylandaudio.com. This is an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Fear Free. Fear Free takes a pet out of petrified and puts the treat into treatment. To learn more and find a certified Fear Free veterinary professional near you, visit fearfreepets.com. I'm Lori Brooks. Okay, you know how this is not a partisan radio show in any way, but you know how um, Russia has been in the news so much lately, and uh, it's President Vladimir Putin. Now, I have a story that, depending on how you feel about him, might change your mind about him. Because did you know that Vladimir Putin is actually renowned for his love of dogs? Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that. He's Yeah, world famous for it. He cuddles um, a, Bel- a Bulgarian shepherd. I had never seen one, but I found a picture of one. And uh, he's also got an Akita that was given to him by the Japanese a few years ago. And uh, the Bulgarian shepherd was given to him by Russia's uh, prime minister. Now we hear that Vladimir Putin has sent the Japanese ambassador packing after they tried to give him another Akita. They meant this one to be a companion or mate to the one that they gave him a few years ago. They were all set to give him this this beautiful puppy only to see the move totally rebuffed by the Kremlin. They're like, uh, no, not going to happen. They didn't want anything to do, but this man loves dogs, so it's kind of a strange thing. It was set to happen last week in Russia, mm-hmm. was when they were going to present him with a, with the puppy, and, and now it's just all been washed off. Now, he didn't say why they did not want them to give him the puppy, or if there was a problem, whether it's political or personal or whatever, but who could turn down a puppy, and especially if you're a big dog lover? Mm-hmm. Kind of strange, isn't it? It is weird. Yeah, I wonder what happens to the puppy now. Well, I'm, I'm sure it'll find a good home in Japan. Um, well, it's too late for this now. Speaking, you know, we always talk about pets here, but if you know someone who wanted a, a puppy for Christmas, but maybe... You thought, hmm, a puppy would be good, but, you know, this person is just not responsible enough. Well, Nordstrom had, but they have now sold out of their very unique pet rocks. Oh, I heard about Uh, this. (laughs) <laughs> yes, it was a, a rather expensive pet w- for a rock anyway, an $85 leather-wrapped rock. And the moment they went online, it went viral all over social media and sold out, and including the smaller $65 version as well, though a spokesman for Nordstrom declines to say exactly how many were sold. Well, I I had a pet rock as a pet oh, uh, when I was a kid. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. You know what? How yeah. long ago was that, the, the big pet rock phase? Because Oh, golly. It had to have been, 70s. how old am I, 30-some years ago at least, yeah. if not 40 years ago. And um, I spent a lot of time going outside and picking out the most perfect round stone. And then we painted it with uh, paints, and we put like little appliques, little ears, and glued them on. And uh, I didn't have pets when I was really young. So I was really desperate. And this was kind of, a, had to have been a pathetic attempt of, you know, begging for a dog from my parents. <laughs> Here's my little pet rock. Oh, I need a doggy. Yeah, so um, you actually made your own pet rock instead of going out and buying your own pet rock. Oh, gosh, no. I wouldn't have bought one. I mean, that was part of the fun was kind of making it your own and, you know, putting a name on it and decorating it. So, yeah. For you kids that don't remember this and think this is the first time the Pet Rocks have been around, everything's very cyclical, of course. You know, people wear old yeah. clothes again. The Pet Rock was big, big, big in the late 70s, early 80s, I think. And mm-hmm. uh, there was, I mean, they made millions and millions of dollars, these guys, just selling rocks and calling them Pet Rocks. Crazy, isn't it, really? It, it really is crazy. But they are uh, low maintenance. <laughs> But for eighty five dollars, yeah. donate that to a shelter, please. <laughs> now that's for the leather jacket, I'm sure. <laughs> you might, you might be right. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you'll be able to buy clothes for your pet rock. Well, they had that too. Remember that back in the seventies, they had the clothes. They had. Uh-uh. I'll tell you, it was an idea I'd wish everybody had wished they thought of that. 
Um, the website, Vet Street, has looked through its database, and they've got a huge one, to come up with a list of the most popular puppy names of the year. Hmm. Okay. Their most popular male and female puppy names, we're going to start at number five, are Duke and Sadie. Number four is Rocky and Lucy. At number three is Charlie and Luna. And then number two, Cooper and Daisy. And the most popular puppy names for 2016 are, and I have to say, none of you will be surprised because you all know these names by heart. In fact, would you like to announce what the number one names are? Because I know you will know. Max. Max, yeah. And Bella. And Bella. Yep. Really? And that's it. Yeah. Yep. Max and Bella. <laughs> All over the Still neighborhood. Still up there. Yeah. Next next week, though, we're going to be doing a list on the most popular dog names overall. These are just for puppies that were born this year. I'm Lori Brooks. Get more breaking animal news anytime at AnimalRadio.com. This has been an Animal Radio News Update brought to you by Fear Free. The veterinarian isn't typically thought of as your pet's favorite place to go. With Fear Free, that all changes. To learn more and find a certified Fear Free veterinary professional near you, visit fearfreepets.com. Hi, friends. This is Dr. Marty Becker, America's veterinarian. As you know, going to the vet can be a traumatic experience for your pet, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, vet visits can be something your pet looks forward to. Introducing Fear Free. When your veterinarian is Fear Free certified, you will be assured your pet's vet visit is more free of fear, anxiety, and stress than ever before. Fear Free takes the pet out of petrified, and it puts the treat into treatment. To find a certified Fear Free veterinarian near you, go to fearfreepets.com. Hi, I'm Dan Aykroyd. Have the happiest of holidays. This is Heather Lockler wishing you all the merriest Christmas. Hey, this is Sean Hayes on Animal Radio. Remember to spay and neuter your pets. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Can I give a um, a shaming? A shaming, yes. We we welcome your shaming all the time. Well, I guess this is, a, how about a lesson learned that other pet owners can learn from someone else's um Stupidity. Uh, fortune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so let, let, let's talk about something about, uh, say, whether your dog gets bit at the dog park or your other dog and your, your two dogs fight and they kind of get into a squabble and nibble on each other. So someone gets bit. Uh-huh. So what do you do as a pet owner? Uh, what would I do? I would go to the vet, but I'm, I'm sort of an overactive. Yeah, I guess I would take him to the vet, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so I would too. And especially, you know, if there was actually some kind of puncture, right. um, if there was any bite whatsoever, you really need to go to the veterinarian. And a lesson learned is that we have a dog that um, four days prior had uh, been in a little family squabble um, in oh. a, a kind of fight and um, was just kind of put back in the backyard and not checked on for four days. And oh. unfortunately, we are fast forwarding to a very major surgery with uh, drains, having to remove tissue that's now dead. Um, really horrible, painful thing. Um, and I left out the grossest part is that we now have maggots in the wounds. Oh. So, so what I can just, if I can impress upon people is, you know, we all hate to overreact, but sometimes exercising a bit of caution is better in the long run for your pet's comfort and for your pocketbook. So don't be afraid. Go to your vet if your dog or your pet has some kind of injury and you're not certain the extent of it. It's always best to get that checked out. Better safe than sorry, right? Err on the side of caution. Yeah. Okay. That's a maggots. Wow. That's ooh. They get into kind of late of... in the year for maggots. I know. Mm-hmm. We kind of usually see that more springing and kind of early fall, but uh, you know we have temperate weather here in Las Vegas, so it's. Uh, and that, of course, isn't going to be cheap either, I, Doctor Debbie. I assume a procedure like that, which could have been, you know, resolved pretty easily, I'm sure, is, is going to be fairly costly now. Yeah, and it's not among the most costly things in veterinary medicine. But yeah, what could have been just a, a couple, couple dollars for antibiotics and some pain medicine is now going to be into the hundreds of dollars, uh, if not more than that. So yeah. Jeez. Okay. Oh. If you want to talk to Doctor Debbie right now, toll free at one eight six six four zero five eight four zero five. She also likes giving second opinions. If you have questions about what your vet has prescribed or the treatment for your animal that has been suggested. She can say whether or not uh, that is the common procedure. Now, of course, she can't see your animal like the veterinarian can. 
She can right, only but go. you know, there's a lot of people that leave the doctor's office, whether it's the veterinarian or the human hospital, and you go home and you go, oh, I forgot to ask a question, and uh, I feel really stupid. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there's no shame, you know, but sometimes people feel more comfortable asking just a question related as a side question to what they already spoke to about their um, with their veterinarian, and that's cool. That's, that's what we're here for. Toll free, 1-866-405-8405. Yeah, it doesn't cost you a penny. Nothing, no skin off your nose. You can call right now. You can also ask your question from the free Animal Radio app for iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry. You're listening to Animal Radio. Call the Dream Team now at 1 866 405 8405. Dogs or cats, horse or emu, animals are people too. Have you ever been frustrated while trying to take a picture of your pet? They're sitting there looking so cute. You pick up your camera and they run away, jump out of the frame, or try to play with you, or maybe even attack the camera. Pet photographer Ian White suggests choosing a background that works well with your pet. For example, if you have a black lab, he'll show up better on a light-colored blanket. Pets model the best when they're a little tired and after a meal. Let them fall asleep on the selected background and then alert them with a treat or a squeaky toy. Be ready with that camera. Try to take the photo from eye level, which may mean lying on your stomach or having your pet up on a bed or furniture. Good luck. I'm Britt Savage for Animal Radio. Animals are people too. Animal Radio. You're listening to Animal Radio. Find us at AnimalRadio.com. Log on, learn more. Geico presents a voicemail from your friend, Electricity. Hey, it's me, Electricity, so I'll keep this short. (laughs) Get it? Never mind. Anyway, I just want to make sure you're not, like, still mad at me about that electrical fire in your kitchen. I mean, obviously you're not, but I'm just checking to make sure. It's no big deal if you are. It's not like you're asking me to pay for the damage. (laughs) Right? Electricity won't pay for an electrical fire. Luckily, the GEICO Insurance Agency makes getting coverage a snap. Visit GEICO.com to see how affordable renter's insurance can be. You're listening to Animal Radio. If you missed any part of today's show, visit us at AnimalRadio.com or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Animal Radio, celebrating the connection with our pets, toll-free, 1-866-405-8405. We'll go back to the phones in just a couple of seconds for your calls for Dr. Debbie and for Joey Volani. But first, we welcome back to Animal Radio Airwaves, comedian and just all-around fun gal, Joanne Worley. <laughs> Hi, Joanne. Hi. How are you oh, doing? listen to that crowd. They're going wild. Wow, wow. <laughs> There's more listeners than I thought there. (laughs) And they're not silent, are they? (laughs) No, they certainly aren't. Well, now, how are you doing? We're doing just fine, and I know you know why we're talking today, because on Sunday, we're having uh, Actors and Others for Animals as having a fundraiser, and it's a luncheon, and Paula Poundstone and Jay Johnson Mm -hmm. are entertaining, and Jamie Farr is presenting an award, the Betty White Inspirational Award, to Loretta Swift. And Lily Tomlin is presenting the It Takes Two Award. I wish I could make it down there. I unfortunately have a previous engagement. But you guys are doing such great... I want to know what that previous engagement is. (laughs) <laughs> you got to try and slip that by. Unfortunately, I have a previous engagement. What are you doing? Are you in church? Well, you know, my proctologist. I have a, actually... A, See, he's open on Sunday? Well, you know what? He gives me a special deal, but I have to come on Sundays for that. <laughs> <laughs> After church. Uh, okay. Tell listeners about actors and others and what you guys do. Okay, Hal. Our main thing uh, is spay and neuter. We help uh, with uh, the cost of spay and neuter and connect people with low-cost vets who realize the importance of that and that people should be responsible pet owners and have their pets spayed and neutered. Isn't it the law in L.A. now that they have to be? It is the law, isn't it? And, And that some people, too. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it should oh be. My. All the audience loved that. They loved it. <sighs> Tell us a little bit about Harmony. Oh, 
Oh, my Harmony. Oh, she is so sweet, so dear. Uh, I used to have, uh, you know, bigger dogs, uh, but I found it difficult to travel. And I was doing some uh, work, you know, raising money for a charity called Hearts for Hounds uh-huh. in Long Beach. I believe they're located. And I called them and I said, you know, and they rescue small dogs. And I said, you know, I need a doggy I can get on an airplane easily with. And they said, we've got a wonderful one we've been saving, <laughs> a very Aww. special. And she is, and they gave her the name Harmony. And she is, uh, well, obviously she has rescued me. Yes. As you well know. That, that's that's how it always works that way. Yes, yes. I know. So she's small. Yes, yes. And she is, um, you know, we have a Sherpa bag, and she's in cabin with me. And uh, uh, whenever I'm offered something someplace in the country, I first of all say, I have a little dog. And then we talk later on of about course. the, the uh, other particulars. Because that is the most, I will not put her in a, uh, a kennel, or I don't leave her with, uh, you know, a trusted friend or anything like that. <laughs> I am, you know, she has me totally under her little paw. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. it sounds, so she goes everywhere with you, huh? Every, everywhere. I don't take her to people's homes when they have their pets there, because I, I think that's rude to invade, uh, you know, other people's uh, territory, you know, sure. your, your dogs or cats. But I, I take her, uh, you know, most every other place. How much does she weigh? Oh, five. Five pounds. Five pa- what kind of dog is she? She's a little Yorkie. A, a little Yorkie. Yorkie. And she has a great array of um, cotton purses that are actually her carrying things on my shoulder. Yeah. Uh, the kind that are actually knitting bags and they have lots of little pockets. Sure. You and ladies, she- I'm sure, are familiar with those. Yes. Does she like to be carried in it? Loves it. Uh, she loves it, and uh, she has, like, you know, little uh, hand towels in the bottom for softness and this thing. And somehow it's like being a little papoose, uh-huh. yeah, swing, yeah. you know, because it's uh, uh, the, the weight, her weight on the shoulder, you know, it's like a, 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 an embrace. Yeah. yeah. I, I have mine. She weighs nine pounds, and I just put the carrier on the floor. She jumps in it, and I pick it up. Oh, yeah, they love it. They love it. I'm yes. going with you. Yep. I'm going with you. That's all I know. <laughs> now, I have a backache this morning because I sleep in whatever position I need to sleep in to accommodate my animals <laughs> yes. in bed. You do the same thing? Oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, what's, what do you say is the, probably the most spoiled thing you do for her? Mm. Yeah, I had uh, to think about that. I would have to. Yes, she... Uh, now, because I've had her many years, and I don't discuss my age or hers, <laughs> yeah. I've had her many years, and now to jump down off, there's an interim little um, footstool at the bottom of the bed that has a, like an, another little bed for her, and uh, it, when she doesn't want to sleep on my bed, then she has this other place. But it's still a little high, and if it's dark, uh, she doesn't see that well. I do have a nightlight for her to just see, but she'll, she'll give me a high pitch. Hey! Hey. That means I want down. No matter where I am in the house, if she's there, she goes, hey, and I run. And I know that what that means. I bet. She's trained you yeah, well. My, my job is to anticipate her needs so yeah. she doesn't even have to ask. Yeah, she's got you wrapped around her paw there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I don't mind it a bit. Joanne, it is always fun visiting with you. We'll have to do it more often. Joanne Worley joining us. Check out actorsandothers.com. And, of course, we'll put links to everything you've heard on today's show over at animalradio.com. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Hal. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. There you go. i got to get out of here. i got to go do my Christmas shopping. Uh, Hal, it's Christmas Eve. I know. (laughs) By the way, if you need your fix during the week of Animal Radio, head on over to animalradio.pet or download the Animal Radio app for iPhone and Android. Download it on your spouse's phone, too. On everybody's phone that you know. It, it makes a great gift. It's free. Just grab a stranger's phone if and they have it out it. and just download it for them. You're doing them a favor. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> have yourself a great week and a Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Gordy's under the mistletoe right now, so I'm going to go over and kiss that baby. <laughs> this is Animal, Animal. Animal. Radio Network. Network.